from Minneapolis, Minnesota. My goal is to come to Thailand and train Muay Thai, Thai boxing, in a Muay Thai camp, and then compete in a ring fight. My goal is just to really experience uh, Muay Thai, the way that it's done and, and taught and perceived in Thailand. I feel that I deserve this opportunity because I've been training so hard. In Thai fighting, I'm pretty much a beginner, but I still think that we can show in the Thai that we're willing to train as hard as they are. This is Minnesota Martial Arts Academy. This is where I train. As you can see, there's a pretty long history here of, of fighting and, and martial arts. I'm 31 now. I am an amateur in Muay Thai. I have nine amateur fights. I'm trying to move closer to a professional level. Muay Thai is a national sport of Thailand. It evolved from basically war arts. When soldiers weren't fighting, they would sort of test their skills empty-handed. Whereas boxing, you're, you're just using your, your fists to fight with. In Muay Thai, you're using kicks, knees, elbows, and punches. I was definitely kind of a, a, a troubled kid in school, and, and uh, I think martial arts kind of kept me in the middle of the road. It steered me away from getting into too much trouble. <laughs> Muay Thai fighters are skilled athletes in touch with all those things. It's very controlled, and I don't see that as violence at all. I see that as a more of an art. My daily routine is uh, usually consists of running in the morning, and then at, I get here at the gym at about 5 o'clock, and I teach a beginner Muay Thai at 5.30. All right, time. Now I want you to grab some uh, focus mitts. You're going to defend the jab cross hook. One, two, three. Hook, cross, hook. That's it, all right, time. After that, we have team training, and that's geared more towards uh, people wanting to fight. Hi, this is my girlfriend, Karin. She's uh, also uh, trains in Thai boxing and has uh, had two fights now, two, two amateur fights against uh, giant Amazon women who um, outweighed her by a lot. I'm really psyched that you get to go to Thailand. I mean, there's always the chance you might get hurt, but more than anything, I'm excited for you. You know, I know it's something that you really want to do, and I've seen you fight before, and I've seen you get injured before. You know, don't get your face beat in. <laughs> this is my coach and trainer, Greg Nelson, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna work on some different techniques of Muay Thai. First of all, we're just gonna work on the on the low, just low leg kicks. When we get into the boxing range, basically what, we, what you're going to have is more of a Western boxing type approach to using the hands. So you're going to see maybe a jab, a, cr a cross, a hook, sway, uppercut, overhand. Once we're inside to the clinch range, that's when the Muay Thai fighter can use the knee. All right? And then there you're going to see side, side knees do this way side and that's sort of aimed for the kidneys and the and the ribs all right so you have a lot of different weapons to to deal with and again all that stuff's going to be illegal in western boxing you know obviously we've, we fought some good fighters but one of the big things that we're going to run into is the muay thai capital of the world you're going to be fighting guys who've grown up with it and so they're going to have every trick because you don't want to go super hard that first round and get so tired that rounds two, three, four, and five are just progressively getting worse for you. I'm going to be training with lots of different people in Thailand, but it's just going to be nice to know that, that uh, my coach is there with me too. This is Sawadi. This is a Thai restaurant that I work at. I'm a waiter here. All right, here's Pat CU for you guys. 
It's a lifestyle that gives me the ability to have a lot of free time to train. I brought some steamed rice out for you. Sort of my interest in, in Asian culture and in martial arts and Asian food, it's, uh, it's kind of led me here, I think. It's probably no accident that I work in a Thai restaurant. This is my boss. <laughs> Hi, Ned. Hi. So how do you feel about me going to Thailand to fight? In no, Thailand yeah. with the Thai guy? Yeah. <laughs> you think you're going to beat them? You yeah. better. <laughs> <laughs> the experience of going to Thailand and training there is probably the most important. The fight itself, it's kind of secondary. I miss you. I miss you too. <laughs> My opponent looks really strong. Yes. He not relax. <laughs> I think he can fight. I looked up at that, you know, check-in for all flights. I'm like, they we're in Thailand now. We're going to the Doi Sutep Wat. It's a, it's a huge temple at the top of this mountain in Chiang Mai. It's about 300 steps leading to the top of the temple here. Buddhism and, and uh, Muay Thai are very, very closely related because you can't really separate the religion from the art or the, the sport of Muay Thai. So you see all the different uh, rituals in Muay Thai. The Wai Kru, which is the three bows, always done before the fights. You're giving um, sort of your respect to your teachers and, your, and to your religion, which is primarily Buddhism here and uh, to your country, to your king. This is the view of Chiang Mai from the top of uh, Doi Sup Temple. Pretty big town. It's huge. Oh, it's good luck. You gotta ring them all, though. It's good luck for the fight. It's about 5.30 in the morning. We're going to train for the first time at Lanatai. You know, it's the first time that I really get to meet everybody. It's nice. It's really nice. Just got light out so you can see everything. You can hear the roosters, uh, hear the roosters crowing. Goodie cop. This is uh, Andy and his wife, Pum, and they're the owners of Lanatai Training Camp. She's the uh, manager, the boss, the boss. The big boss. I have everything, yeah. She, she uh, arranges the fights for all the boys. I teach, look after the boxers' training. Hope you enjoy your, your stay and your training with us. There's a lot of local people who train here, local Thais. There's some Thai champions who train here. It's great because people come here from all over the world, too. There's people here from England, from Australia. As a foreigner coming here, it's very difficult because you, you're you starting something that Thai kids have been doing since they were really small. The youngest a Thai fighter can fight is 15, and it used to be a bit younger. I've heard of people fighting it even younger, like 10 or 11 or 12. We're fighting a guy from their camp, which is kind of strange because usually guys from the same camp don't fight and we're training in their camp, so they're definitely going to be scrutinizing us. We're going to take um, one of my young lads, his name is JR. I think Nat's going to have a hard fight because uh, JR is very, very strong. So he's going to fight with Nat on the 30th this Sunday. And most of the boxer here know him as JR. He already been fought for 49 times, and only 11 times lost. My opponent looks really, he looks really strong. I don't think he's going to have any problem. You know, I may have the problem. <laughs> so I really don't have any problem putting Nat and JR together. The only thing is it's a pity that they have to, that they have to train in the same gym, because they might become friends. <laughs> Sixty-five. 
four and a half kilos. And my lad right now, JR, is weighing at 59. This, yesterday he was 59. So, you need to lose a little bit of weight, my boy. A little bit. All right. <laughs> my fighter's at 59 kilos. I'm at 64. Probably about 139, 139 pounds. We're going to, you know, make it a little bit more even. going to cut it down a little bit. How are you going to lose weight? You just don't eat too much and you work out. That's all it is. I don't, I don't really know what the schedule is, you know, how I should, how I should train. One hour for a skipping. Two minutes. Uh, one hour to kick the pass, uh, half hour kick the pass and shadow boxing. And I miss the kick, put it down here, and then move out. He was just giving me like some different, um, you know, different tips on kicking and on when, when you're shadow boxing, how to visualize you know, what you're doing rather than just indiscriminately throwing uh, techniques in the air. When you're shadow boxing, you really want to focus on what, what you're aiming at, what, where you're kicking, if you're kicking low or medium or hot, kicking to the head. If you're doing something, the other person, even if he didn't speak English, could show you how to do it. He is basically tell me to pull, pull in as I drive with my knee. So rather than just hit right here, he's he's pulling and driving the knee in as you pull this way. So you get more penetration with the knee. 15 seconds. Go, go. Doing rounds with Ty Win. He's gonna train with me, hit the pads, hit the focus mid, and just mess around. We're just gonna play around, I guess. When I'm hitting, you know, you're letting that yell out or letting that air out when you kick or punch. There's that expression of striking. You know, I'm good with the kicking, kicking, and I'm good with with punches. My knees, my knees are okay, but I need to, you know, work on that a lot. It's just I'm, I'm stiff. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, not, not fluid. He could have just thrown me all around, you know, and worked me even harder than I was going. So it's gonna be fun training with these guys. It's gonna be a big learning experience. This is day two of my training. Just taking a light run through the main street of Chiang Mai. And all the monks come down in the morning and they get their meal for the day. People give them offerings. And uh, whatever they get in their bowl that morning, that's kind of their food for the day. We're standing here with Sam Nook. He's a retired fighter now, and he was a champion, stadium champion in Chiang Mai, in the north, and as well as the south. What Sam was saying was the most important thing about uh, fighting is to stay relaxed, and that it's not just your physical strength or anger. It's a, you know, keeping a cool heart and then using your, using your brain too. <laughs> He's still fat. <laughs> he said. He said I'm so fat. He <laughs> said so I need to train harder. There's too much. I'm soft. Nat's uh, looking pretty good. He's getting used to uh, a different type of holder and a different you know type of feeder at the tie pads you know it's uh every camp and trainer kind of holds a little bit different he not relax if he relax look beautiful no if he relax can not hey. 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 I 
I've learned that I have a lot to learn, that's for sure. How much ahead of, of, uh, of my skill level they are and how, how long I would have to train to get to their level because they've been training for so long, have so much experience. It's, uh, it's pretty awe-inspiring to see some of these guys. Win kick left. Left kick. Left kick. Uh, power. Not 100%. But I think he can fight. Real fight. The elephant has a really big significance in Muay Thai history. He said I'm kind of weak. I need to train harder. We're in Bantawai. It's, uh, it's like a village where they, all the people who live here are artisans, and they create sculptures, lacquerware, all different kinds of artwork. These gentlemen here are working on the silver, using these small tools to create these just elaborate scenes. This is a fight scene between Burmese and the Thai. The guy's catching his kick. That's a really common Muay Thai technique. So the roots of Muay Thai are in, in, in sword fighting, in this type of battle, battle right here. These guys are fighting on the elephants here. You can see the elephants, you know, battling it out right here. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, that's intense. The elephant has a really big significance in, in the Muay Thai history. The, uh, the soldiers would go into battle riding elephants and fighting right next to elephants. <laughs> Sorry about your head there, buddy. Muay Thai has evolved a long way from, from the battlefield to a sport. There you go. Second uh, training session of the day. We're at Sao Wetika. It's a rural training camp south of Chiang Mai. Why I wanted to come to this camp was just to see a camp that's kind of untouched, you know, foreigners haven't been here, and just to see how people train here. So it's just gonna give a different perspective on, on the training. And each camp is different. You know, they sort of have their specialties, what they're good at. Some camps are known for knees, they're better with the knee, some camps are better with the elbow, some camps are better, you know, known for their kicking. This camp is really a lot different than Lana Thai because it's, it's in a small uh, village. This is the first time any foreigners have come to this camp. And so they're really uh, making a big deal out of it. It's, it's great. Kids that are training here, they're super young. And they've been training since they, you know, were really small. You get used to people holding for you and they kind of do things the same so you get used to them. He was uh, feeding the tie pad rounds for me, which is really, really cool because I have no idea what he's going to do. <laughs> the weight in my, in my mouth, you hold it in your mouth and you lift it so it strengthens your neck, strengthens your jaw. And that's, you know, for when you get hit. Do you have any advice for me, you know, for my, for my technique in the Muay Thai? It's superficial. It's not. Said I'm kind of soft. Said I'm kind of weak. I need to uh, train harder because my, I'm, you know, I'm not strong enough. I heard that a lot today. Little morning run on day three training. Everybody here thinks I'm fat. I gotta work on it, I guess.
well, it's monsoon season right now in Thailand, so it, it pretty much rains every day for a little while. Now the sun's starting to come back out. Training around the guy that you're fighting, it, I don't know, it doesn't really, it almost makes it more relaxing. You know, because he's right there. It's not, he's not like a, you don't create some other image than what he is. You know, you always have anxiety about your ability, about your opponent's ability. I mean, it's always going to be there. A lot of foreigners you see come out here, myself included when I got here, um, aren't really uh, up to snuff, whereas Nat seems to have a very good kick, very good boxing ability. He seems to have a, a good background. Uh, I don't think it's a fair matchup because uh, the ties, I think he's got about 40 fights now or something. And <clears throat> 40 fights in Thailand, and that's like 100, 150 fights in, in the States. So that's kind of the main thing. I'm more of a kicker and a, and a puncher. And those are probably going to be my main strengths tomorrow. Win or lose, I've just learned a lot from, from fighting and from this fight especially. I would put the money on the tie guy for sure. This is day five, fight night, fight day, fight morning. We're at the Gavila Boxing Stadium, and I'm about to get weighed in to uh, find out if me and my opponent are, you know, equal weight. The stadium in Chiang Mai is smaller than, a, than the professional stadiums, but it gets packed with people, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Make sure I'm not going to have a heart attack. This is me right here. This is my opponent. We're at 62 kilos, which is about 137.5. And we're both on weight there, so we're ready to go. No more, no more weight cutting. So I don't have to worry about anything for the rest of the day until we, until we fight. One of the, the Thai boxers, Atlanta Thai, he's fighting for a championship fight, and it was about a kilo over. He had to go out and try to lose some weight, and now he went in for his second weigh-in, and he has to go lose some more weight now. One pound to go. He's gonna sweat it off. It's all about sweating it off. He'll probably have to work out for like a half an hour at least. He's really lean right now too, so it's, it's not gonna be a lot of fun for him to lose that. You're totally drained. You haven't eaten. You haven't drinking anything, mm -hmm. and now you got to try to muster up the energy again to to lose weight, to get yourself totally sweaty to lose weight. It's really tiring. But right now at his state. Mm -hmm. It probably takes a lot just to get him sweating. Trying to, again, get the blood, the pores open so he can start to sweat, I think. And they're going to go for it one more time here and see how it's going to go. And if he doesn't make it, then it's out to the field again. Yeah, that knee coming straight up. That's good, though. That's kind of cool. We're just reviewing the training at the Lana Thai camp. The hips. Use your hips, yeah. Because you're letting your hips get low, and then mm -hmm. double twitch thing. One, two. All right, this is fight night at Gavia Boxing Stadium. This is a tradition.
professional Thai musicians that are playing for the fights. And they're kind of, uh, they're warming up the fighters right now. The pipe and the drums and the, and the gong are, it's very, very loud. It's really echoing throughout the whole stadium here. Typically the musicians will, will kind of set the tempo to the, to the, uh, to the fight by the, by the pace of the music. So if the musicians are kind of accelerating the music, usually the fight will start to pick up. A number of rituals that go along with the sport. Um, when a fighter enters the ring, he bows at each corner. And this is called sealing the ring. And what this is doing is sort of sealing out the ring um, against any kind of evil influences or outside influences. And then the Ramui is a traditional dance. It's sort of derived from movements from sword fight. So that's kind of keeping that tradition alive. Mong Kong is uh, worn, on the, worn on the head. And uh, it's blessed by a monk, and it kind of protects your head from getting chopped off from injury. They were also wear one on the arm. Thai training camp, Muay Thai camp that we just trained at. He's an awesome fighter. On a professional Muay Thai fight, the rounds are three minutes with a two-minute rest, and there's five rounds. That's a lot of minutes to be to be in there fighting. The judges are, are focused more on kicking, knees, and elbow. The judges are going to be keeping track of of the different points. The referee is there in a big part to protect the fighters, to make sure that things aren't going on that are illegal. Yeah, sometimes you can watch a uh, Thai fight and it's, it's really difficult to tell who won because both guys are so good. Thai people love to gamble on the Thai fights. So these guys are all, they're all betting on their, on the different fighters. Maybe a few people bet on me, but I bet, I would put the money on the Thai guy for sure, so. Tay Wen is also going to be the head corner man tonight, as well as Greg. Lots of sleep today. Huh? Lots of sleep. I see. Tay Wen's had over 50 fights. Uh, he's getting ready to wrap my hand, so he's kind of adjusting all my fingers. Loosening up my joints. Your hands are really delicate. So he's really trying to, you know, trying to strengthen them. We've never seen uh, someone wrap hands like that before. That's just to protect my knuckles. Yeah, the reason for doing this is to get your body warmed up and uh, get your muscles warmed up. Put the, they put Vaseline on you so you're slippery. It helps the, uh, you know, kicks and stuff kind of slide off a little bit. And also, too, in the gloves, so the gloves don't stick to your skin when they hit you. The guy has some heavy looking legs. His legs are really big. I may get my ass kicked, I don't know. But I'm gonna go for it and we'll see how I do. And that's the, that's the bottom line there. I'm in the Gavia 
stadium in, in Chiang Mai, in Thailand. You know, it's, it's, it's a great life experience. So I'm just taking it all in and we'll see what happens. Take a little drink here, my friend. Smart fight. Do your deal. I'm gonna take your monk on off. and slow, trying to keep that good pace, checking each other out, looks good, looks good so far. So much. Try to push him forward. Try to push him forward. All right. What do you feel? How are you feeling? Good. I feel good. You look great up there. <laughs> yep. Yes, Attack good. first. Okay. A little tentative. Just okay. let it go. Kick first. Attack first. All right. Kick first. Kick last. Will Will Prince. Right kick, right hand. Go, go. Yes, yes. Big breath. Give me a mouth care. Big breath. Good. Doing good. Doing excellent. How do you feel? Good. What round are we? Is up three? This is three coming up. One, two, kick. One, two, kick. You know? Jab, jab, cross, kick. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, but keep it hard. Let those hands go a little bit. Here, take some drink. 
to go. Start off. Breathe. How are you feeling? Good. You broke my stomach. That's me. Oh, shit. That helps a lot. You gotta move in to attack. Right? You can't stay out. Move in to attack. Attack his legs. He's not covering his legs. Okay, let it go now, Nat. You be first. You be first, Nat. You go nuts on this round, buddy. All right. I want you to go. I want you to pull it out this time. All right. You, you got to start off. You're not starting. All right. You're hesitating. Your hands up again. You knee, knee, knee. You had him stunned with punches. You got to let those hands go. Okay, bro. Because you totally had him stunned. <laughs> Attack. What are you gonna lose? Nothing. Nothing. You're gonna win, yes, sir. Don't think of him as anybody except for somebody you gotta fight. He's gonna try to win.
Good fight. It's an awesome fight. Awesome fight. He showed Muay Thai. The other guy won, though. But you got... Yeah. It's okay. I don't mind. It's, it's not... Winning or losing is not as important to me. What's important is doing it. You know, that was like my biggest worry that, you know, for some reason I get in there and just not let it happen, you know, not let it come out. He's a young guy, but he's got a lot of experience, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's got so many fights on me. He's just super relaxed in there and Thank seems you. like a nice it's kid. Just probably, it's just probably there, so he took it. Totally. And my, I, my hand was kind of down. I felt this, <clears throat> I'm like, ooh, it's his elbow, you know? After the fourth round, I was like, cool. I got four rounds in at least, you know, and it was really good. So even if I do bad in the fifth round, I still, you know, did really well for the four rounds, and so I'm pretty, pretty happy about it. I mean, there's a couple times where he, he got me in the, in the body with a kick, I think, and that, that hurts worse than anything. I think the reason why I, you know, wasn't given the decision is because in the last round, JR kind of uh, stepped it up a little bit kind of commanded the ring a little bit more near the end. He kind of showed the ring generalship, and that's really important. The person who sort of sh kind of shows that they have a little bit more control in the ring, that's the person who's going to, you know, usually win. I, I, uh, I wanted to give you something. Just, uh, this is our shirt from our Muay Thai gym in Minnesota, in the United States. Thank you. And, you okay? Yeah. So, okay. And here for you, too. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I mean, that kid, is, he's 15. And he's fighting a 31-year-old guy, so... That should tell you something right there. My outlook is... It's really changed coming here. As foreigners, we come here, we have the privilege to come here and train. But for a lot of Thai kids, you know, it's kind of sometimes their only option to get an education. So for some, some kids who are involved with it, they, you know, might not even be having that much fun doing it. It's the life of Muay Thai. You win some, you lose some. And uh, you never worry too much about losing. And that was a lot stronger uh, than I expected. Also, <laughs> JR is uh, feeling it a wee bit too. He was um, surprised by Nat. Nat's uh, ability was very good. He didn't show it in training, but then that's quite often the case. Uh, training doesn't always reflect how a fighter fights, and Nat showed uh, some real good heart and uh, some good technique. I think JR won the fight fairly, but uh, he's hurting too. You did the pain on, on, on his leg. It is almost broken. It was great because I got, got a chance to come to Thailand and train here and, and meet a lot of the fighters and, you know, and I was nervous as hell, but it, it worked out well. Tomorrow, it's a murder in a cheap hotel. The suspects, two men, one woman, and a dog? On Nero Wolf, tomorrow at 8, 7 central. Now, back-to-back -back episodes of Columbo, beginning next on A&E.